Greetings. I would like to derive the formula for EMF produced by a generator. We are going to start with the law of magnetic induction by using Faraday's law, which tells us that the electromotive force is equal to the number of loops in a circuit times the ratio between the change in magnetic flux and the change in time. And this is a negative scalar. I'm going to divide my board uh, into two pieces and I'm going to have the the main flow of the derivation on one side and some of the justification and side work on the other. It's going to look similar to a two column proof uh, for high school geometry uh, just so that I can show all the logic and the flow behind what's going on here. Create a line here so that I can have that division. One of the first things that I want to note is that magnetic flux can be stated as a, B, cosine theta. This is our magnetic surface area times our magnetic field norm, uh, magnetic field component normal to the plane. Uh, so we're going to use this substitution. Another substitution that we can use is that theta is equal to omega T. So omega is our angular fre frequency of rotation of the loop and then t is time. So these are the two substitutions that we're going to want to use in Faraday's law here. So a rewrite looks like So a rewrite looks like this. We've substituted in for the change of magnetic flux, AB times cosine, and in for theta, omega times T. So this is all a part of the input for the cosine function. The next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to apply a couple of theorems from calculus. If you ignore the scalar over to the left, what we have is a ratio of changes. And this in the numerator here is a continuous function. It's a cosine function and we just have this scalar multiplier on the outside. So we have continuous function here. We want to look at the derivative of AB cosine omega T with respect to T. So I'm over to the side, I'm going to write this as a partial. We're going to look at the derivative with respect to t of a b cosine omega t. And so the two theorems that we need from calculus is we need the product rule and the chain rule. So these are the two theorems that I'm going to apply. So first of all, when we look at this, we have AB times cosine omega T. So we need to use the product rule here. So the first function times the derivative of the second function, derivative of cosine is negative sine. But then we have omega t in here, and that's where the chain rule comes in. So we have to take the derivative of omega t, and that's going to multiply by the original function here. So the derivative of omega t is going to be the omega. This is also a product, and so we're really doing the product rule again. So we have the we have omega times the derivative of t, which is one plus the derivative of omega, which is zero times 
the function. So this is the derivative of the interior function here multiplied by the negative sine omega t and that's all being multiplied by a b. Now that all has to be added to the derivative of a b times the original function. Since a b is a constant, the derivative of a constant is zero, so we have zero times cosine omega t, and so that's not really going to add any magnitude to this. So we see that this goes to zero, this goes to zero, so simplifying this, we have AB times negative sine is going to be negative AB sine omega T times what's left in here. <clears throat> we have omega times 1 is omega plus 0 is omega. So this is being multiplied by this. So that's going to substitute in for this ratio. So we have negative N times negative a b omega sine omega t and that is the electromotive force. Now we multiply the negative n by this so negative times negative is a positive and so we have that the electromotive force is equal to n a b omega sine omega t and this is the electromotive force produced by a generator cheerful calculations